Microsoft clustering can be used to create a highly available SQL Server database. Double take GeoCluster can be used to allow Microsoft clustering to stretch across multiple sites by removing the shared disk requirements. However, SQL Server 2008 and 2008 R2 have a serious limitation when it comes to multi-site clustering. It is not possible to extend the cluster to a site that uses a different IP subnet. The picture on the screen shows the Sydney and Brisbane networks both using the same IP subnet. Therefore, we could use an extended geocluster between the two sites. The Melbourne site, however, is using a different IP subnet. And so it is not possible to use multi-site clustering to include the Melbourne subnet. It is, however, possible to create a second cluster at the Melbourne site and use that second cluster to protect the primary cluster that is located in Sydney and Brisbane. We have seen in previous videos how to create a highly available SQL Server cluster using DoubleTake GeoCluster. So I have already created a SQL cluster at site A and a SQL cluster at site B. We can see the IP address for SQL cluster 1 is on the 10.7.1 subnet and for SQL cluster 2 it's on 10.77.7 subnet. So I'll just launch SQL Server Management Studio and I'll connect to SQL Server 1 which is my primary um, SQL instance and I'll also connect to my uh, DR instance which I've called SQL Server 1-DR. Um, they are both up and running at the moment. We can see that uh, we have a database on SQL Server 1 that does not exist on, on the DR equivalent at this point. To configure protection, I'm going to launch Double Take Availability Application Manager. I have already installed Double Take on all, all nodes in the cluster. I'm going to select my source server, SQL Server 1, which is the SQL cluster instance name. And I'm going to select my DR server. The next step is to configure protection, so we'll hit the configure button, wait for double take to gather information from the cluster nodes um, before we can configure the protection job. The configure protection wizard allows us to choose a failover type, only DNS failover is supported for a cluster. Remember we will be failing over to a remote subnet, so we need to update DNS on failover. Uh, we can change the TTL record for the DNS records to reduce the amount of time before clients receive the new IP address. The monitors tab allows us to configure the amount of time before failover is invoked or you are alerted to a failover condition. We can choose what we want to protect. Do we want to protect the entire SQL instance or do we want to deselect some databases? Also, we can add disk volumes or uh, folders if we wish to, wish to add them to the protection job. Mirror settings is always checksum or full if you're protecting SQL databases. The advanced tab, generally speaking, doesn't need any changes being made, but we can actually go into the advanced tab and view scripts that are invoked on the failover and fail back. And if necessary, we can actually modify these scripts. After configuration, we want to validate the protection. Double take is going to talk to all the nodes in the cluster, make sure that everything is compatible, that we've got the correct version of SQL installed on each node, that the method of installation has been the same, things like the co-location, etc. There will always be a number of validation warnings or errors, and these can usually be fixed using the fix all button. Any errors that cannot be fixed using the fix all usually mean as an installation issue or a serious issue that we can't fix um, and you'll need to manually address that. Once all validation issues have been fixed, the validation uh, will repeat until we are given the all clear telling us that all servers are configured correctly. At this point we can enable protection. Double take is going to create a replication set on each node in the active cluster and will create a connection from the active node to the DR cluster.
it will actually create the double take um, connection as a cluster resource that is visible in failover cluster manager. It will also create a cluster resource on the DR cluster that will monitor for the uptime of the production cluster. We can see protection has been established and we can now do some testing, failover testing to the DR site. Okay, I've rearranged the screen slightly so we can see the two SQL clusters um, and the, um, the active resources in each cluster. We can also see SQL Enterprise Manager on the top right. So I'm just going to create a new column in my database and I'm going to do a graceful failover first. So I'll just call the column um, graceful failover. And I will save the database and then I will hit the failover button in Double Take Application Manager. Now I'm doing a graceful failover, so I'm going to select uh, graceful failover. I'm just going to give uh, Double Take five seconds just to flush the queues um, before we bring up the, uh, the DR server. We can see failover cluster manager of the primary node, shut down resources, and we will see Double Take Application Manager running the failover script, which will start the cluster resources on the DR cluster. Okay, we can see SQL Server starting it's online on the target server. So we can again go to uh, SQL Cluster Management Studio, um, just disconnect from the previous connection and connect again to the same server name we used previously, still connecting to SQL Server 1, which is now actually located in the DR site. Just browse down it through my table, find my columns, and I can actually see my graceful failover column I created earlier. I'm just going to create a new column, indicating that I'm actually running on the DR site. So, so I'll just call it failed over, and again I will save that data. I'm now going to hit the fail back button. What this is going to do is actually restore data that we've changed in while we've been running in DR, restore it back to the production site, to the production cluster, um, and then will give us the, the option to con complete the failover to get users back online. You can see here on the initiate failover, I can choose to restore the data if I wish, but I could actually deselect that if I did not wish to bring the data back to production. When double take is restoring the data back to production, it is only going to send the changes that have occurred while we were in DR. We do not need to send the whole database back. Okay, the restore has been completed and we're given the choice of whether we'd like to complete the fail back now. We could, of course, wait until later on when we can schedule a short period of downtime because we're going to disconnect users from the DR servers, the DR cluster, and reconnect them to the production cluster. We can see that the uh, DR cluster has actually shut down the SQL server cluster resource and we are running the fail back script. The failback script is going to reverse the DNS changes that we made during failover and will start the SQL resources on the production cluster. Okay, we now see the SQL server resources on the production cluster have started. So we can again use Enterprise Management Studio to connect to the production cluster and we can view the tables and the columns in the database and we can see that our column from when we were failed over, it does exist. Again, I'm going to create a new column um, and call it uh, back in production. I'm going to save my database again, and then I'm going to hit the enable protection because we failed back. We want to reprotect our production cluster back to DR. We do need to go through the validation process one more time. We usually receive a warning letting us know that SQL Server can't be found on the DR cluster. It, we will need to temporarily start it in order to configure the protection again. So Double Tech will go through its validation checks again. It will communicate with all nodes in the cluster and will create the cluster resources on the DR and the production clusters um, and establish the Double Tech connection.
The next thing to look at is an, a real failure of the production cluster. I'm actually going to power off the active node in the production cluster. This will cause the production cluster to fail over to the secondary node, which in turn will create a double take connection from that secondary node to the DR server. So even though we've failed over, we're still protected. Okay, we can see that the SQL cluster has come back online on the secondary node, which is actually called SQL node one. I'm going to just use Management Studio to reconnect, uh, browse for my database, and I'm going to create a new column just to let me know that we've failed the primary node. Make sure I save that change. Then I'm going to turn off the secondary node in the cluster. This of course is going to cause a complete cluster failure and we will need to fail over to our DR cluster. So double take was configured to monitor the cluster IP of the production cluster. That has failed so we'll detect a failover condition and we'll be prompted would we like to fail over. Assuming of course we didn't enable automatic failover. So I'll click the yes button and uh, as we saw before with the graceful failover, Doubletake is going to run through its scripts to start the SQL server on the DR cluster. Okay, so we can see the SQL cluster resource on the DR cluster has come online. Um, so the last thing to do is to use the SQL Management Studio one more time to um, connect to the cluster. I will close the, the previous connection first of all, uh, connect to the cluster again and make one more change in the database. This time I'm going to say I'm in DR. It is of course possible to power up the production cluster and fail back exactly as we did previously.